Today we're going to be talking about the state of college football and how I think it can compete with the NFL in terms of popularity amongst football fans. Now, first, in order to do this, we need to talk about what the issues I think are that have been holding college football back way behind the NFL and why NFL is just so much bigger. Now, obviously, the NFL is always going to be probably bigger, but I think college football is gaining popularity a lot recently, and I think it still has a lot more room to grow. So the two main issues I personally see with college football that are already being worked on fixing are player personality recognition is the first one. I mean, like when you turn on an NFL game, even if you're a casual fan, I mean, you know who the dudes are, you know, you turn on a Vikings game and you might not even have ever rooted for the Vikings, but you, you've heard the name Kirk Cousins, you know who Justin Jefferson is, you know, before this year you'd heard a Dalvin Cook, you know, you know the names, whereas college football, I mean, you can be a pretty big college football fan, you still turn on a game where it's like Clemson versus Georgia Tech first game and you couldn't name a single player on Georgia Tech or, you know, even like Clemson, sometimes you turn on a Clemson game and you don't even know some of these guys that are playing. So it's bringing out these player personalities and bringing players more in the spotlight because we can see with sports like the NBA is becoming a lot more of a player sport, whereas these younger generations, I'm part of those younger generations. Personally, I'm not this type of person, but some people like to just root for players nowadays. They see these players and they root for them. Now, obviously, this is harder in college because they only have three or four years in college. If they're good, they only have three years and then they never play college football again, whereas these leagues have more time. But still putting these players' faces in and letting people root for the players, which is a big thing about popularity, and people like to root for other guys. Um, so they have already taken steps. I'll talk a little bit um, in the future about what they've already done and how I think they can keep pushing those. But the other issue I'll get to first before we talk about how to fix it, what are the things holding it back? The other thing that's, I think, kind of holding college football back is just the bad games. Now, it's something we'll never be able to avoid, but... It's just getting good games because we've seen when we have like national championships in the playoffs and you get to the, put these big games together, the viewership's up there. Like you can see people want to watch college football. It's just you turn on a whole week and there might not be a single game where you're like, that's a good game. And it's like, kind of goes back to the personalities too because there are always good games, but you want the best teams playing the best teams. I mean, like that's what you want to see. Like I personally find like one of my favorite games from last year was UNC versus App State. Neither one of those were like a top 10 team, but that game was incredible week one last year. But for the for the main viewers, like they might not want to watch that, but then that's when it goes back to player personalities. Maybe if Drake May is in that game, which he was, you're like, hey, maybe I want to go see what Drake May does in this game, you know? And it gives people just more reason to root for, but the bad games are always going to be there. And I do think there is, that comes to the issue of the new playoff format coming, which we'll get to. But those are my two main things I think are kind of holding college football back as much as it's an incredible thing. But this is how they've already started fixing it. And that's with NIL and Transfer Portal. Both of those tools help that first point of personalities and recognition. I mean, NIL is huge for player recognition and bringing out personalities and getting people to root for players because you're allowing these dudes to go out there and show their face and, hey, I'm Caleb Williams. I'm quarterback of USC you know, you can be in commercials, you can get money doing other things. Like we've seen in the news, Quinn Ewers was getting like free trucks at Ohio State as a backup and stuff. You have the stories about like Arch Manning turning down NIL. You know, we just have all these more personalities and faces coming out because of NIL, allowing them to express themselves. We're not holding players back and saying, hey, you can't, you can't sell yourself as the quarterback of USC. Now Caleb Williams can say, hey, I'm the quarterback at USC, this is who I am, and go out just show more personality and association with the team, which I think is helping a lot with players. I think that we're already so much better with player recognition. Like when you go to the draft, so many casuals know more players because of this ability. And then transfer portal is the other thing, like allowing players to enter the transfer portal and like bring their name back in. Like, like normally a couple of years ago when Sam Hartman was a dude where he's a good quarterback for Wake Forest, but like if... You know, Sam Hartman is one of those not many people talk about, you know. If it was like, oh, yeah, Sam Hartman, he's a solid quarterback. But casuals probably have no idea who he is. Now he gets an opportunity where, hey, I've shown what I can do at Wake Forest. It's time to step up to a bigger program, which you couldn't do before with the rules. But now he's like, hey, I'm going to go to Notre Dame. Now his name's everywhere. People talk, hey, Sam Hartman, Notre Dame, this, this, that. And his name just keeps going bigger and allows people to put themselves in better situations. A guy like DJ Ungalele is a perfect example of this where he's this humongous name under Trevor Lawrence, comes in balls uh, when Trevor Lawrence gets hurt for those two games. And then he kind of has a slow and it just wasn't working at Clemson. And if this was before the transfer portal, 
DJ Ongalele would have just sat at Clemson. He maybe transfers. He has to wait a year. People forget about him. No, like, you know, you don't know where he goes. And we, who knows what happens to his career. Now he's able to say, hey, this isn't working out. I'm going to go move over to Oregon State where I get an opportunity to start a new fresh beginning. And let, maybe he puts it back together. And that's just an opportunity that they didn't have before. So I think NIL and Transfer Portal are huge steps in the right direction for college football. I think they just make it so much more fun and also allow smaller programs to rebuild fast. Like what's happening with CU with Deion Sanders similar with Nebraska and Matt Rule, these programs where you can get these coaches in who people want to play for and you're able to recruit that talent and rebuild programs. Like I think Colorado is going to be an immensely better program just year one, just because of all these transfers. Now it's still going to take time. We saw it with like USC last year. Even if you bring a transfer, you still got to mend. It's not going to happen year one, but it helps it like before that wouldn't have been, the Colorado might've gone from like a one or two win team to a f- three or four win team whereas now they have opportunity to be like a six win team which wouldn't have been possible without that and it just brings more programs to light and i think that's just the huge thing making it more competitive overall now going to that second point it's hard to fix bad games but i think we have seen steps in the right direction for college football and the first one is the first one is conference realignment which i mean as much as people want to say like you want all the conferences to be competitive and they don't like people leaving but like Recently, if we just have a couple stacked conferences, those teams are all playing each other, and it is just better. It is just gonna it's gonna provide more quality games when Texas and Oklahoma are actually getting to play these SEC teams versus because like I was going over my schedule predictions, which you can check on my last video. You look at some of these dudes' schedules, and you're like, dude, they just don't play anyone. We don't know if they're good until the playoffs. Whereas if we can get these conferences, and rather than maybe have a power five, I mean, get all the teams playing each other that should be really just see those matchups. And then another thing that I think is we've seen it with the SEC now is doing it is getting rid of divisions. Like, come on, like Big Ten, let's just get rid of divisions. We want to see the two best teams play in the championship. We want to see the best teams play like Georgia doesn't play Bama in the regular season because they're in their different divisions. Now they're getting rid of divisions. We might be able to see more better matchups and just allow having teams schedule more out of conference like Alabama, Texas, Florida State, LSU, like these games just didn't happen before. And now we're finally getting these better out-of-conference games. Notre Dame is a good example of always having a good schedule and they're always fun to watch. And I think just that competition level, because everyone wants to see good games, so it's about getting as many good games as we can and just allowing a broader audience to kind of see. Um, So that kind of leads us into the 12-team playoff, which... Why I ha- where I'm kind of have my concerns about the 12 team playoff. I definitely think four was not enough. They had to change out of the four, and I mean bravo for them for actually changing. I didn't know if college football playoffs would actually, but they did. I think it's a great move. And here's why. Let's go over the 12 team first. I'm going to show you what it would have been last year, a couple of the rules, and then I'll go to what I thought could have been another route that they took. All right, sorry, I don't have the visuals. I'm having some technical difficulties with some stuff, but I'll just go ahead and explain how the playoffs work. So the rules for the 12-team playoffs are starting not this year, but the 24-25 season. So we're going to have a normal four-team this year, and the next year it'll change, is 12 teams are going to make the playoffs. The first four seeds are all going to be buys, and they have to be conference champions, which I love. I think more importance on winning your conference should be, and that's why if you saw my last video why I had like Florida State in the playoffs, over Michigan was because they won their they won their conference and I think that that should just be more important when your conference should mean more um so that's why I love the their conference rules I thought that was a great job by them so you have to win your conference like last year TCU would not have been a top four seed and could not get a bye because they didn't win their conference I like that rule next up you have your 12 you have the rest of the 5 through 12 you know 12 versus 5 11 versus 6 those are your matchups and how they choose the total 12 teams are they take the six highest ranked conference champs and then the six highest ranked not champions. So, um, for example, in the last playoffs, how it would have gone is they had the one seed Georgia won the SEC, two seed Michigan won the Big Ten, three seed Clemson because they won the ACC, they're the third highest ranked conference champ. Then the fourth highest race conference was Utah. Utah beat USC. So those would have been your bye teams. All won their conference. So you're a little like Utah and Clemson getting a bye. But hey, win your conference if you want to be a higher seed. I like that. Go. You got to be the best team in your conference to be the best team in the nation. So I like that. And TCU would have been five as the best non-conference champ. 
Then at six, they had Ohio State, second best non-conference. Seven, Bama. Eight, Tennessee. Nine, Kansas State. Ten, USC. Eleven, Penn State. And then 12 is Tulane would be your sixth conference champ. So they're your next highest ranked conference champion. Tulane sneaks in there at 12. And like I said, I love the importance on conference championships. That's another thing that I think should just be more important and why I think getting rid of divisions is going to help that a lot. You'll see it with like the SEC. They already I don't know if ACC does divisions or not. I don't think they do. But you're definitely going to see a big difference in the SEC once they get rid of that. And then hopefully the Big Ten follows soon and does something similar. But now as much as I love those conferences, the 12 team, you notice the one thing I said earlier was getting rid of bad games. I don't think the big this gets rid of this doesn't help with bad games because like we're gonna have TCU versus Tulane. Eh, I think TCU wins by a lot. Tennessee, Kansas State. That's actually probably gonna be a pretty good game. Uh, Bama, USC would actually be a pretty good game. Oh, and then Ohio State, Penn State. I don't think that'd be a very good game. Ohio State would have run them out last year. And like in the second round, we're getting Ohio State versus Clemson. That'll be a good game. TCU, Utah. So like, you get good games as you come in. But those first games, like, I guess last year was really competitive. But a lot of years, you're just not going to have very good games in the rest of those. So that's why I, I thought it should have been more like a six-team uh, six playoff where, you know, you have your top two get a bye, and then you have, like, three versus six, four versus five, and then they play those two teams who had a bye. I like implementing a bye so it makes teams want to get those first couple seeds. We'll see how it works with the 12 teams. We're definitely going to get more football, and we can't complain about that. Um, but I think it's going to be fun. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this. I think college football is just going to keep taking off. I mean, college football is just so fun to watch. And like, you already have a rooting interest. If you went to a university, you already have that team, you know, I let, I'm excited for this college football season. Let me know what you guys think college football has done well, what they can do to keep, keep up with the NFL. The NFL is a monster man. And I mean, college football, I think they have some work to do, but I think they could get up there. Let me know what you think they should do. I'll see you guys for the next video. Thank you for watching.